Another, we said there was more new features. There's more new features in SRT. Some of the other new features in the Pearl that are really cool are HLS and MPEG Dash support. And these are future streaming uh, protocols that we hope to see. You know, RTMP is getting kind of old. And uh, we know Facebook went to RTPM, RTMPS, but the truth of the matter is, is old protocols that need to be updated for newer solutions. SRT is one of those solutions, but how do we get to more broader uh, CDNs and stuff? Basically, this is the way to do it. Easier and cheaper for CDNs to dis deploy. And once again, because it's from a video-centric world, it's going to play nicer with firewalls and proxies. So some of the possibilities that you're going to get is multilingual support, uh, closed captions and advertisements that are fed in, and digital rights management. So this is stuff that content producers feel is very important. And with these new technologies are going to be there, and what we wanted to share for you, if you're in need of some of these new protocols and capabilities, well, guess what? They're now part of the Pearl, Pearl 2, and Pearl Mini. Very cool, FFAN. Great job. Other feature enhancements that are just as important with the new software, support for multicasting to publishers. That means now it's very easy through the interface to go to multiple CDNs, Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, all at the same time. Better AFU, which stands for Automatic File Upload, Queue, and Management. Once again, if you're trying to record a show, then you want to upload it at night to a file server or the cloud or what have you. That can be completely automated, and it works better and easier than ever before. And the last one, we had some slides to show you, but basically, meaningful streaming errors and warnings. If you've done streaming, you know, and Adam will shake his head constantly during a show, YouTube just gave me an error, and I don't know what it means. The YouTube error is like, check your underwear. You don't know what that means. It's giving you no clues or anything, or it's saying protocol 257.6. What basically the folks at Epifan have done is they've gone in and they're trying to make sure that the error message they give you from their devices are more meaningful and more workable for the people actually producing the show. And for that, I say kudos, and everyone in our industry should follow Epifan's example because troubleshooting your live stream when you go live is one of the most terrifying experiences any video streamer will ever have. And that's why we do a pre-show a pre where we get up and going about five minutes before our show starts. Why? Because any given week, and we do this every week, multiple shows out of here, something goes screwy with the streaming, with the protocol, whatever. And the big problem is, is oftentimes when we get a code, someone's running and Googling the code to try to figure what it out, to try to get it going. And sometimes we're just like, screw it. We can't even figure this out. We're not going to go to YouTube today. We're just going to go to Facebook. With more <laughs> meaningful error messages, we might be able to fix that really easily to say, oh yeah, it was just a matter of this setting we had to change, or hey, this wasn't at the right frame rate, or what have you to get it done. So the less cryptic the error messages, the better streaming will be for the whole world. So kudos to Epifan on that. Thank you for watching this highlight from the Video Guys Live webinar. If you like this video or you want to learn more, check out the full webinar in our description, or head on over to videoguys.com for more information.